Oh, now there is a blast from the past. The old on top and hot retro theme. I've been sort of missing it, to be honest. And I get the feeling maybe some of you have too. So hopefully that quenched your thirst. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is February 15th. It is Wednesday, which means I go live tomorrow. I go live every Thursday, me and Lily Star at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. As soon as that market bell goes off, we've gone live. We go live for about an hour. We're talking to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. So if you have a ticker that you would like us to take a look at, you are hereby invited to come join us. Drop that ticker in the comment box and Lily and I will look at the news, financials, charts, whatever, and we'll give you an honest opinion about it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, all these videos I do, we talk about OTC and penny stocks. We are looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And one of the great things about looking at penny stocks is they're not restricted to any one market. A penny stock is any stock under five bucks. Well, there's a ton of those on the OTC. There's also a ton of those on the major exchanges. So they are everywhere. Finding penny stocks is not too difficult. Now, when I do research on OTC penny stocks specifically, this is my go-to site without a doubt, the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site. All that news right there, that's all OTC market news, and I got it strictly 100% from this site. Just by clicking on that link right there, I can keep up with the news as it's coming out all through the day. I am in the loop without ever having to leave this site. I get all of my current information here because it is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Imagine me doing all of my OTC research on the internet. Oh no, is it happening? Honestly, folks, start here. This will save you more than just time. It'll save you a lot of frustration. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. That isn't looking good at all. I am crossing my fingers hoping for a bump and we got nothing. This is just a smidge above yesterday. Actually, it's not. Our dollar volume went up, not by much. We jumped from 1.1 to 1.2 billion. We really need to be up at 2 billion at least. Share volume, we're at 4.6 billion. Well, we need to be at 10 billion to really get the market moving. So we are under by 50% in both of these categories. And trades, this is sad folks, we are falling every day with less and less trades. We've been stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades for at least six months. Uh, yesterday, I think we are at 211, the day before 224, we are consistently falling down in trades. This is desperate folks, it's got me more than just worried, I think I'm a little scared. <laughs> All right. I've got some stocks I want to share with you now, I think these have a good chance of making us some money. Let's go see what I got. Keeping in mind folks that all the stocks we're looking at come from my due diligence of looking at the charts first. I am not looking at the news. I am scanning charts using my scanner from about 001 to $3 and I jump down to about 10% gains for the day, maybe even a little lower. And I start looking at charts. Don't have a clue what chart I'm looking at. I'm just looking at charts. And I am going downhill from 10% to 8% to 6%. And what I'm looking for is a chart that has heat. Maybe a lot of volume has accumulated, or maybe it's had a distinct trend change, or it's just about ready to break through a strong SMA. Then I go looking for that catalyst for a match to light that chart. But I'm looking for lingering news. I'm looking for something that came out a month or two months ago, a filing or a news press that announces something in the near future that I can position for right now while nobody's paying attention to it. So this stock kind of falls into that category. This is ticker SWISF, Secure Private Data. Now, Secure hasn't had any new filings come out, but they have had some news come out this month and they have started a new strategic plan and all of it looks like it could ignite the charts. So Secure finished today just under 4 cents at 0 .0379 with almost 2% gains. They are on the best tier of the OTC, the top tier, that is the QX. What makes it the best? Well, not only do you have to audit your financials, but you got to give us all the information that you have on your company. They are super transparent, very trustworthy. 
Speaking of trustworthy, they've got every green tick here you could want. Verified profile and a transfer agent. I'm always hounding you about these. There's a lot of important information being represented by those green ticks. So the longer you're in this company, the more relevant that becomes. Now, if you're just gonna be in this for a day trade or a short swing, don't worry about it too much. They have independent directors. That's a good thing. You need these whenever you uplist. Now they may have, probably did, use them when they came from the pink or the QB up to the QX. But if they have aspirations to go up to the major exchange, they're gonna need them then too. And there they sit still, so who knows? And we got a bonus over here. They are penny stock exempt. This is a great thing. This should get rid of that feeling of it being a risky startup business. The actual definition for penny stock exempt is that they have to have been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars in assets during that entire time period and kept up their financial filings. So this company looks good. So what can we learn about secure private data? Well, Secure is a cybersecurity and internet privacy provider of Swiss hosted solutions for secure communications and secure data management. The company distributes a suite of encrypted emails, secure messaging, and secure communications, as well as a suite of cloud-based storage, disaster recovery, and document manage tools. Now, most of their business has primarily been in Switzerland, but they are expanding now. They are in Latin American countries, and they just came out with a brand new product that they are launching here in the United States. And I'm going to share that information with you in just a minute here. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, oh God. Do, 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 do. We had a huge drop. She was over a quarter million shares average daily. Today, she only did about 32,000 shares, and I'm not real sure why. Share structure for the company. All right, we got a couple numbers here. 86 million, they tell me was the float back in October of last year. 105 million is what is in the unrestricted, and we got 117 outstanding. Well, I went searching for the float, I couldn't find one number anywhere. Honestly, now I didn't spend an hour doing it, but I did spend at least three to five minutes and I couldn't find anything. So the best thing I can tell you is she's under 117 million. Financials for secure. Not very much, but they've grown, right? We've jumped from 21,000 to 114,000. Remembering those three zeros up there, we got to put behind any of the numbers here. And the interesting thing here is all this money they were making didn't cost them anything. They got to keep 100% of it. Quarterly, what do we got over here on the quarterly basis? Actually an improvement. We've only got three quarters, 70,000, 87,000, and 86,000. If you add those up, you are already over the full amount that they did in 2021 by about 50%. And we've still got one more quarter to add to this. So they are making more money. They're just not growing by leaps and bounds, but they are steady growing. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Let's get an overall view of what the company's about. Oh my God, look at this folks, this is great. Total assets, $6.2 million. We've got to add three zeros to all these numbers too. And look at their total liabilities, $24,000. Oh my God, they are standing on some very firm ground here, looking good. Let's take a look at their disclosures, see if we have anything recent. Uh, nothing since September of 2022 and not much there. And looking at their news. So we are gonna look back here to the middle of December, they came out and told us that they had made a strategic change in their budget. They had cut their 2023 budget in half compared to 2022. That isn't gonna hurt folks. Matter of fact, it's gonna help. They gave us more information about that budget cut, talking about stock options, a conference, and then we've got two pieces of current news here I think we need to take a look at. The first one came out on the 8th of February. The second one came out today. So the first one we're taking a look at, Secure Private Data announced that they will be providing a private non-big tech VPN solution. Uh, Secure is a U.S. listed cybersecurity and internet privacy company with roots in Switzerland that provides private and secure communication solutions. It uses its own servers, 
military grade encryption security and combines it with its proprietary encryption and Swiss data privacy laws. We have listened to our customers and are very excited to announce the launch of our secure VPN for late March 2023. Now a VPN is a virtual private network. What it basically means is, is that you sign on and all of your network traffic coming and going goes through somebody else, somebody in Switzerland. And this helps you in a lot of different ways. Now, a lot of times these VPNs have not been safe. They say they've got the top quality safe stuff and they're launching this in March, which is right around the corner. And the news that came out today, Secure Private Data announces its 2023 budget is fully covered with existing cash flow. The company has seen great success in Latin America and even recently announced its advancement into the privacy markets with its new VPN product, Secure VPN. Secure has also recently announced a partnership with Noblis, an American all-encompassing e-commerce platform that offers customers tools and resources to run a successful online business. Noblis is expected to provide these services to its clients in Q1 2023, right now. This agreement will help position Secure as an alternative security and privacy communication platform and allow online American businesses to become more independent from big tech platforms. Secure announces that it is entering 2023 with no debt and no need to raise cash to meet its 2023 budget obligations. What they're saying is they're not going to dilute their shares. They're not going to have to put any more shares on the market. That's always good. They go on to tell us that as of this announcement, the company had approximately $3 million in cash and has an established budget of $2.3 million. So that leaves them $700,000 leeway. We are pleased to announce that we have been able to cut close to 50% of our expenses for 2023 and still expect an increase in sales. You're cutting it on this end, adding it on that end, it's just getting bigger and bigger. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. As always, we've jumped on over here to my free trading platform, the only one I got. This is Think or Swim. I got it when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. So can you. So we are looking at secure. This is ticker SWISF, six month, four hour chart. We've got a high back here six months ago of 25 cents. And at the end of December, we had a low just under three cents with a huge burst of volume on that day. She has been under the 200 predominantly this entire time with only one break. Her problem has been getting over the 50. She's having a hard time there. She's been trying, but not having a whole lot of luck, but you're really not gonna stick it going up over a, a large SMA, like a 50 day or a 200 day SMA when they're falling. Think of it as having ice on it. If they jump on it, it just causes them to fall down because they're being pulled down by these big SMAs. What we need to look for is for the SMAs to start to plane out and get flat. Then they can get on top. And that's exactly what happened here. She hit this low. Bumped up to that 50 day SMA. There's your finger saying that's where I want to go. She came down and then just walked right on over the 50. No excitement, no big bars. And she is sitting up there steadily getting her footing. She's a long ways from that 200 day SMA, but she is conquering the first step of the battle, getting on top of the 50. We've got no volume to talk about, right? We had 31,000 shares today when she's normally doing over a quarter million, which will be the token sign we'll be looking for. We're going to be looking for that volume to come back in because right now she is pretty much going sideways um, right on top of that 50. She is doing what she's supposed to do before she starts to turn. It doesn't look like it, but she is setting up right now. Our technicals are real flat. You can see our PPO, which is our percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD. You read them the same when you can read them. I'll zoom in on that just so we can see what is going on. My PPO, what is that doing? Uh, it just had a crossover going down just barely right now could keep falling let's take a look at our macd is she doing the same thing uh yes she's had a crossover and is pushing down as well but our rsi is going up with this red bar right there looking at our 20 day one hour view 
So we got a low bubble here of 2.9 cents, just under three cents. Started banging on that 50, jumped up onto our 50, she has been wrestling. She does not want to come down. When you don't see her actually dipping down and she's just hanging on the 50, that is hanging on for dear life. She does not want to come down. And look, we got a poke right there. Bink, she's pointing to that 200 day SMA telling us where she wants to go. Our technicals, they're as flat as they were on the four hour. This time our RSI is falling with a green bar on the chart. Our five day, five minute. Well, that's what we're looking at right now, folks. Sideways activity. She is just going sideways, waiting for something to happen. And that's what I'm talking about. She isn't falling right now. She's hanging on to that 50. She's been under the 50, under the 200. She's now gotten on top of it. She is just going sideways, waiting. And I'm sure any moment something could happen. You saw the news, revenues could start to increase. Business is going to increase now that they're in America. And they're talking about March launching and the other products, Q1. That's all happening right now. And March is only two weeks away. So keep your eye on this chart. She may dip some more. I'm not thinking she'll dip much, but she may dip some more and you can get yourself an entry on this. But once you see that volume start coming in, I think that's gonna be a very good run. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock I got. This next stock we're taking a look at probably sounds familiar to you. Tritium DCFC. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if you watch my videos, it does. We just talked about the common stock for this company yesterday. Well, today when I was doing my due diligence, going through charts, looking for some heat, I found a really nice chart and it was the warrant to this company. And it looks a lot better than the chart for the company. So I thought you might wanna see this one. Plus, they've had some more news come out today. This is DCFCW, Tritium DCFC Limited. Finished today at 48 cents with just under 4.5% gains. So what does this company do? Well, they're in a booming sector. They're into EV charging. They produce, distribute, and sell EV charger pumps. Look at those babies. Ain't they beautiful? These are already out there. They are in lots and lots of countries right now. As a matter of fact, they have got 75% of the market share in New Zealand and Australia. As the number one ranking business, they have got the most market share in those countries. In the USA, they've got 30% and they are also ranked number one here as well. Pretty impressive. And then in Europe, they have 12% of the market share and they are ranked number three. And they're doing a lot of business over there right now, as you're gonna see as we look at the news. So, DCFCW, what was her relative volume today? There was an increase. She jumped from 36,000 to 46,000. Now, don't get all bothered by these small numbers. You normally don't see huge numbers on the warrants, but you do see big jumps. There's large spreads, so it doesn't take a lot of volume to get it to move farther and faster than the stock does on good news. There is no share structure with the warrants, so we don't have to worry about that. Financials for the company. Well, they have been growing steadily since 2020 to 2022. They have virtually doubled their revenues. This is June of 2022. They were at $85 million. On the quarterly, we don't get a whole lot of information, but we do get some more information in one of their filings. Speaking of filings, we got some very interesting ones over here. We have one, two, three, four 13 G's that all came out this month. These are good folks. A 13 G is uh, ownership, beneficiary ownership. When a new investor comes in and they buy so many shares, they qualify for ownership of the company. And they're pretty easy to read. Come on down up here will be the name of the person investing. That is Varley Holdings. Right here in the center is how many shares they got, 14.8 million. And right there is their ownership. 9.5% is what they own of this company. And we've got four of those. And you can have more than one on a form. You could have three different investors on one form. So we have a minimum of four new investors that have ownership, part ownership in this company. They have voting rights and can control what happens with this company. So that's a good thing. People don't throw money at garbage. And then we got a 6K here. Lots of good information in this 6K. Let's jump into this. 
At the very top, they tell us that Tritium announces largest customer order in the company's history, and they released some preliminary results for 2022. This was for the end of December 2022, and now we've got some news that comes after that. They tell us here that over 2022, they secured the largest order from a single customer in company history with a new order from BP Petroleum. That is the BP on the New York Stock Exchange. They are deploying these across the United States, the United Kingdom, Europe, and Australia. BP is doing that. They've also achieved the largest monthly production output in company history in December of 2022. They have got two uh, facilities. They have one in Tennessee and they have one in Australia. Both are operating and both are operating at peak capacity. They're doing really, really well right now. And they tell us, we saw that the revenues by June of 2022 were 85 million. They tell us by the end of 2022, they will be between 95 and 102 million. They haven't been released yet, but that's what they expect them to be. So they're still growing. And they say for 2023, they expect revenues in excess of $200 million. Now they got a nice brochure. What, what was that one? I don't want to pass it up. Uh, in December 2022, Tritium produced record units at both its Brisbane and Tennessee facilities with each location contributing to the achievement of the single largest monthly output in company history with more than 600 and 400 units respectively. And down here, they got themselves a brochure real nice easy information and they tell us here as i said uh they are number one and number three in mo these huge countries well they rank themselves they estimate that they are number two in the world for market share for ev chargers and they believe that they have sold just over ten thousand by this december 2022 well they just got an order for another 10,000 and two more orders for 300 each. So business is exploding and I expect it to get bigger and bigger. As more of these pumps get out there, more people are going to buy more cars. More people are going to put up EV chargers. And before you know it, they are going to be everywhere. Now they tell us that these are some of the companies distributing their products. Any one of these companies with a green tick under it is distributing their pumps. And as I said, this is where I got all of my figures from. They have a huge market share in the world. They consider themselves number two, and they have got people who are distributing these for them. They don't have to do the distribution. Let's take a look at that news. I'm looking at news going back here to uh, the beginning of January. Tritium secures largest order in company history, which they just told us about. Here in uh, January also, Tritium delivers first fast chargers to Evive for planned 10,000 charger network. This is where they're getting that huge order. Then they got another deal. OK, they're out of Denmark. They've got 670 gas stations. Prepares to deploy more than 300 Tritium DC fast chargers to expand Denmark's EV infrastructure. So they got lots of people distributing their pumps everywhere. And then we got news that came out today. They tell us here that today the company announced they will be adding more than 250 jobs to the total anticipated workforce in its Lebanon, Tennessee factory, Jobs in America. Hoorah! The company also shared the recent achievement of the International Organization for Standardization Certifications at the facility. The 250 plus jobs included in this announcement will add to the more than 500 jobs over the next five years in Lebanon, Tennessee. Yeehaw! Made in America. It's good for a lot of reasons. So you can see the potential, right? They've got electric pumps that can go in all these different countries that can be bought up by private business owners, little stores, big stores, restaurants, bars, gas stations, everywhere. So this is an open market and I think it's going to explode. And I think the warrant could explode better than the stock, at least quicker, faster gains. Let's go take a look at that hot chart. We are now looking at the warrant for Tritium DCFC, ticker DCFCW. 
This is a six month, four hour chart and it is looking really good to me, folks. First off, we got a great high bubble here, $2.60. We're currently at 48 cents. Now she has fallen drastically since then with only one attempt to get through the 200 all this six month period. She fell down to a low here mid January of 16 cents. Now look at all the volume. That is a ton of volume right there. Right now, we had 48,000 shares today, and it looks like it's starting to build back up. Once she bounced off of this low bubble, she got over the 50-day SMA, which she was under deep. She got on top of that and then made a huge jump towards that 200, got very close to it, fell back, and she landed on her 20-day SMA, has abandoned the 50. The price is getting lighter. It's being lifted up and up. She then made another attempt for the 200 here, fell back to her 20, then graduated up to the nine day SMA. That is beautiful. And she is right up underneath that 200 day SMA after hitting it a couple more times. Our technicals are looking brilliant. Look here, folks. This is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator, and this is my ADX trend continuation line. As long as this line is going in the same direction, it means your trend isn't changing. Right now, my trend is going uphill doesn't matter if this is going uphill or downhill, just is the trend continuing here? Yes, this is still going down. We got that bobby pin. You see it? You see how they're spreading the blue and red line? Anytime the blue and red are spreading, guaranteed 100% your price is going up. So this looks like it's about ready to bust over that 200 and that's when we could see a serious run. Our MACD, it's an agreement. We've just had a crossover. It is just now starting to push up. The only thing not in agreement is our RSI. It's falling down right now, but not by much. 20 day, one hour view. All right, she's above her 200 and paying homage to that 50 day SMA, right? She's bouncing on that a little under, comes back on top of it, steady climbing. Had a nice bounce here from a low of 26 cents up to 62 cents. Whoa, that's a nice rip right there. And she came down and she just settled out. Everything looks good right now, but she does show a little bit of pullback on her technicals because of this late day activity. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. All right, let's pull that in a little bit, see what we got going on. She's riding her 50 day SMA very tightly. She's had a jump here from 37 cents to 52 cents. That was in one day, that's not a bad jump. And now it looks like she is virtually, let me grab my line here. I'm just looking at 50% of this, drawing a line in the middle of the box. All right, so she is right there. I want to see the price after it goes up not drop any further than 50% of this biggest surge. Well, that's where we're at right now. It took over a day to get there, but we have averaged out. So she's on top of her 20, on top of this 50% mark, but she's under the nine day SMA on her five day, five minute chart. And the technicals look weak right now. She could come down to that 50. No problem there. It absolutely could happen, but she'll probably hang right around it. But what I'm concerned with is that next piece of news. This thing is ready to pop. Everything is perfect, folks. Now, of course, she only did 48,000 shares today, so you don't want to go buy any huge number of shares. I'm only putting in $50, $100. I'm taking my double, triple, quadruple gains. Every now and then I get myself a thousand percent gains and then I reinvest it. But I'm not trying to hit a home run by putting in $1,000. Remember, they only did 45,000 shares. You don't want to be holding 80,000 shares when you only do 45,000 in a day. It could hit the price you want and you're not going to be able to get rid of all of them. Speaking of selling, I want you to pay attention to the ask and the bid before you sell. There are some huge spreads on these warrants. You may be at 22 cents and it jumps to 48 cents. Well, before you go selling, look at the bid. It may and most likely is still at 22 cents. And you're going, why isn't it going up? Well, normally for warrants, they want a second buyer to come in. So the first buyer will push it up, but the second buyer will confirm it. That's when you can sell. So please make sure you're always looking at the ask and the bid before you sell your warrants. This one, I expect to run and I expect it to make us some good money, folks. I like the company. I like what they're doing. And as long as the stock grows and becomes more valuable, the warrants become more valuable. And remember what a warrant is. 
It is a coupon. If you want, you can hold these for a certain amount of time. Find out the deadline. Most warrants have five years on them. And any time in five years, you can come back and buy a stock at a cheap price. I don't know what their warrants price are, but you can find it in the filings. In any case, I like DCFCW and DCFC. I got another stock to show you. Come on. Last stock we're taking a look at is pretty tempting. This is edible, ticker EDVL, Edible Garden. She has had a lot of new information. She's got new filings, she's got new press releases, and she's got a hot chart to boot. So Edible, she finished today at $4.06 with just about 6% gains. So what does Edible do? Well, you know it has something to do with food. Edible Garden. They are a leader in locally grown organic leafy greens and herbs backed by their zero waste inspired next generation farming. They are offered at over 4,000 stores in the United States. Edible Garden is disrupting the CEA and sustainability technology movement with its safety in farming protocols. They use sustainable packaging, patented green thumb software and self watering in store displays. Edible Garden is also the developer of ingredients and proteins, providing an accessible line of plant and whey protein powders under the vitamin whey, W-A-Y, and vitamin whey, W-H-E-Y brands. In addition, the company plans to offer a line of sustainable food flavoring products such as pulp gourmet sauces and chili-based products, and they are still extending their product line. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, not good. Dropped more than 50% of her volume from just under a half a million shares down to 203,000. E cats. Share structure. Well, this is just plain ridiculous, folks. Look, our outstanding share count 341,000 shares. Folks, I don't know if this is even possible. It may be, but it isn't right. See, there are lots of minimum requirements on the major exchanges. A minimum bid price, you can't go under a dollar. Minimum shareholders, you gotta have at least 50. Minimum market cap, I think it's 35 or 50 million. Well, you've also got a minimum float. You gotta have at least 1 million shares in the float. Well, it's not possible. You can't have more shares in the float than you have in the outstanding share count. Now, I did go do a Google search and I found two numbers. One was 1.8 million. Well, that's not possible. You can't do it. The other one is 245,000 shares. Uh-oh. <laughs> so if our outstanding share count is 341,000, most likely the float is 245,000 shares. You're talking about an unbelievable, almost illegal float. Now this does confuse me a little bit and I'm gonna share why with you here in just a minute. Let's take a look at our financials for Edible. All right, at the end of 2021, we had $10 million and goodness gracious, they only got to keep a little over a half a million dollars of that. Quarterly. Well, things are looking better. Uh, they're doing 2.7, 2.9, 2.7, and they're starting to keep some money out of this. And they've got one more quarter to go. If you add this up, that's about 8.59 million. And they did what? 10.5 in 2021. Looks like at this rate, they're going to exceed that in 2022. Let's take a look at those disclosures. We got lots of disclosures over here. First off, you've got these uh, 42 B3s. Not quite sure what these are. This has to do with, oh right, I'm gonna be sharing news with you about NASDAQ. This one too has to do with NASDAQ. I've got the news for that. This one here, the 8K, which didn't come out too long ago, another one for NASDAQ. You can see where some of this news is gonna come from. And then also here in February, we've got what? 13 G's, one, two, three of them. This means new investors, new ownership. They've bought in enough to become owners in the company. So it can't be too bad right now, can it? So let's take a look at some news here because really that's what all these filings are telling us is the news. Let's take a look at some of the news we got over here for them. We're going back to December. Uh, the company announces new distribution with Gristeeds and D'Agostino Supermarkets. 
Also in December, they complete phase one build out of Edible Garden Heartland ahead of schedule. January, they announce a new distribution with Morton Williams Supermarkets. Then they had a public offering on uh, February 3rd. They put $10.2 million worth of shares on the market for the public to buy. Five days later, they were all bought up, all of them. So the company now has $10.2 million to work with. Then we got two pieces of recent news here that I want to focus in on. One came out on February 9th. They tell us here that Edible Garden announces research partnership with New Jersey Institute of Technology, the USDA, and the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, to study nano bubble technology. Research funded by the Environmental Protection Agency's Pollution Prevention Program to evaluate the benefits of nano bubble technology on plant growth. The company says we are excited about joining forces with the New Jersey Institute, the USDA, and the EPA in this research partnership as their commercial partner. That's important right there. These are the people that will make the money from everything else these people are paying for. The EPA funded partnership will focus on studying the use of nano bubble technology in a CEA environment. Nano bubbles are tiny bubbles of gas, smaller than traditional bubbles, believed to improve plant growth and crop yields in soil based and hydroponic systems. The research will aim to validate the potential benefits of nano bubbles for indoor agriculture and explore their impact on plant health, water usage, nutrient utilization, and energy efficiency. And the news that came out from today. Oh my God, I just had an epiphany. <laughs> I just realized what I was confused about. They've only got 245,000 shares, right? Well, they just had a public offering. They just put $10.2 million worth of shares out there. I'm not quite sure how many shares that is, but that's well over 245,000. So this news now makes sense to me. Edible Garden regains compliance with the NASDAQ continued listing requirements. They had failed to meet three of their requirements. They failed to meet the minimum stockholders equity requirement, the publicly held shares requirement, and the minimum bid price requirement. Well, now that they've put $10.2 million worth of shares out there and they are all bought up, they got that taken care of. They've obviously got the minimum stockholders equity requirement fixed by putting all those shares out there and they're over a dollar. They're now at $4, so everything is great here. And I think this has a lot to do with it. They were about ready to be kicked off of the NASDAQ down to the OTC, and they fixed everything. So that's what's got this thing looking good to me. You wanna see the chart? Of course you do, let's go look at it. Now this is a pretty interesting chart. She's got some bright spots and she's got some dark spots, but I think she's got potential. This is Edible, ticker EDBL, six month, four hour chart. Check this out, six months ago, she was at $60. She hit a high here of 64, which was pretty much where she was sitting anyways, but she has been falling drastically all of this time, under 200, even under the 50. Then we see all this volume come into the picture. And right here, she has hit a 52 week low just three days ago. This is a 52 week low. And normally when you see a company that has value, if a low bubble, a 52 week low bubble pops up, you normally see some strong buying right behind it. We didn't see that here, which I find very curious. She got over that 200, but then had a serious drop here. And I have no clue what actually caused this drop. She was consolidating, but then took another drop hitting that low bubble and now is going sideways. Our technicals are all pretty weak, except for our MACD which has actually been growing ever since the fall, even though the price is falling. Everything else looks really weak right now. 20 day, one hour view. So she was up above her 200, up at $17. That was about 10 days ago. And then had a crash here on the 2nd of February, coming down hard and staying down here all of this time. Right now, it looks like we're getting a crossover on our PPO, like she's trying to come up and it actually looks yeah, we've got a price that has gotten on top of the nine. You can't climb until your price is on top of your nine day SMA and is getting squished. Look at that. 
She is getting squished between the 50-day and the 9-day SMA. She's gotten as tight as she can possibly get. She has to make a decision now. Where is she going to go? I think she's going to go up. The PPO says she has a little up momentum. But as you can see, everything is pretty flat right here, right now. 5-day, five 5-minute five chart. Lot of volatility here. She is rolling all over the place. And she was hanging around her 200 day SMA here until she wasn't. And she fell all the way down to that low bubble, which we hit in after market hours. She came out of that back up here. She tried to get over the 200, but that's just too much of a serious downhill decline. She went sideways until it got closer. And now she's up over top of her five minute five day 200 SMA. She's also fighting with her 50. She has got a lot of little battles right now, but I think she is setting herself up for a breakout. And when you've got highs of $60 just six months ago, where could this go? I mean, honestly, the right piece of news comes out, where could this go? So with everything we talked about, I think there is potential with this. EDBL, she's got a lot of ceiling. You might want to cash in on some of that. Personally, I think those three stocks got some hellacious potential. Edible, only at $4 with a high of $60 six months ago, is now compliant got all three strikes taken care of and pulled off of her record and she is off and running now. Where's it going to go? And then we've got SWIFTS, S-W-I-S-F. Great asset to liability ratio and they're coming to America with a new digital product. That should explode. And then we've got one of my favorites, DCFCW. I already love the company with these electric chargers. I see them growing and growing and growing for many years to come. And I think the warrant is just going to keep up with it. So do you like the sort of due diligence we're doing now? Do you like looking at warm charts first rather than looking at the news trying to guess which one's going to run? I like it. I hope you do too. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.